breakdown of this short clip making use of Unreal Engine's MetaHuman asset. This really short clip was made in less than a week and that was only possible because of Epic Games' large library of assets including the very impressive MetaHuman collection. I used my Rococo motion capture suit to get some raw motion data, but as you can see, my hands aren't really steady enough and aren't aligned with the ropes on the swinging bridge. After retargeting the motion capture to the MetaHuman rig, I popped the motion data into Houdini and used some Kinefix IK controls to lock the hands onto the ropes so the positions would align. The swing bridge is created in Houdini, along with the procedural motion that was added to it. Next, I needed to transfer the swinging motion to the MetaHuman rig, and it's important to note that this is a lot easier done in Houdini because my swinging bridge was created in Houdini. I tried aligning the MetaHuman to the bridge inside Unreal Engine using the constraints, and that was very hard and didn't work out very well either. Transferring the swing motion to the MetaHuman in Houdini was a lot easier and way more accurate. After I was done, I popped the rig back into the Unreal Engine and picked a nice looking environment. This scene environment is from Epic Games' demo projects on their marketplace, so it's completely free and all set up. All I had to do was pick a good spot and add my swing bridge and MetaHuman. Then add some facial expressions to the MetaHuman, set up the cameras, and render. How do I animate the MetaHuman? Facial animation done manually is just too much work, and facial mocap requires very specific equipment. Not everyone has a mocap suit, but I bet a lot of you have webcams. Some of us don't have an iPhone, and maybe some of us simply don't like acting. Have you heard of AccuFace? It allows pre-recorded videos or real-time footage to be taken with a webcam and stream into its software for facial motion capture. This means you can hire freelancers to do part of the acting and dubbing because AccuFace is pretty accurate when it comes to raw facial motion capture. But it relies heavily on the iPhone's true depth sensors, so it's an Apple only solution so far. I haven't used the animator, so I won't comment too much about this except the fact that it's really popular these days. How do I animate body motion in MetaHumans? Rococo Studio has this new dual vision that uses two webcams to capture body motion. I think this is amazing because of the affordability and flexibility of the setup. I saw previews of the dual vision in action and it looks very impressive. Unfortunately, I have a very small room and that doesn't sit well with the dual vision. You do need a fairly large room like a living room or maybe a basement to get it working. I do have a Rococo suit that works amazing for me. I love using the suit combined with its Rococo Studio software to clean up small foot locking. It does a very good job, but most importantly, it's easy to use. We all know what's it like having a never-ending list of apps to learn, so user-friendly is very important. MetaHuman Creator has a lot of one-click features that allows you to customize your own MetaHuman using predefined templates. But if you really wanted to create your own very unique MetaHuman, there is a relatively new feature introduced in MetaHumans that allows you to upload your own custom mesh of a head. This is amazing for digital sculptors like ZBrush users or sculpting done in Blender. You can really go all out on customizing the MetaHuman. The best thing is that after you're done the sculpting, you don't have to worry about retopologizing the head because Unreal Engine's MetaHuman Creator Pipeline will handle all that for you and even add realistic skin-like textures with a click of a button. But not so fast. In this video, I'll go over some of the awesome things of MetaHumans and slightly touch on the limitations that I've discovered. But keep in mind, Epic Games has always made things better with time. I upload my FBX ZBrush sculpted head with horns into Unreal Engine as a static mesh. I want you to notice that the horns are still here even after I imported the sculpted mesh into Unreal Engine. Next, right click the content browser, go to the MetaHuman animator, and select MetaHuman Identity. Rename the file and double click to open it up. Next, click on the Create Components drop down and select From Mesh because we're gonna turn our custom mesh head into a MetaHuman. Now you'll have to search for your static mesh file name. Remember when we imported our FBX into Unreal Engine? It turned it into a static mesh file. That's what you need in here. 
Next, make sure you have the neutral pose selected. Then using the WASD controls in the viewport, pick a front view of your head. You need all facial features present in the shot. That means the eyes, eyebrows, nose, and mouth have to be in the shot. Now click the little plus sign in the corner to add this camera to the front view. Next, we're going to track markers by right-clicking the bottom highlighted blue bar that says frame zero. That's the front view we just added. Then select track markers. You should see a bunch of green lines outlining the facial features of your head. I had cases where these green lines didn't show up at all. That's when I really deformed the sculpted heads that were not recognizable by Unreal. Just remember that if you don't see these green lines, it could be Unreal Engine thinking and processing the image or Unreal Engine can't recognize the facial features at all. If so, try a different mesh to see if it works just for a test. Now click the MetaHuman Identity Solve button up top. Next, click the Mesh to MetaHuman dropdown and choose Auto Rig MetaHuman Identity with Skeletal Mesh Plus Full MetaHuman. Unreal Engine is telling me I forgot to choose the body type. Click the body menu and choose something you like. Now you can try that mesh to meta human button again, but what I wanted to show you is Unreal Engine has lost the horns of the skeletal mesh already. Now we're gonna go back to that meta human identity file and try that mesh to meta human button one more time. Unreal Engine will upload our meta human identity to the meta human creator web app. You can see that the horns are completely missing. They're smoothed out. Since the monster head didn't work out with the horns, I didn't want to add that to my UE project. Instead, I'll be adding my stylized head that I sculpted from ZBrush. First, I'll import my FBX model that I sculpted. Double click the imported model that's now turned into a static mesh file in UE and just open it up just to check if it, everything looks good. Go back to the content browser and right click and select MetaHuman Identity. Rename it to anything you want. Double click the newly created identity file and open it up. Click the Create Components drop down and choose From Mesh. Now we'll find our static mesh file like just before, but this time I'll find it of, uh, for the stylized head. Make sure you have the neutral pose selected on the left. Now we'll take the mugshot and start the track markers. Using the WASD keys and I'll choose a front view of the head that fully displays all facial features. Now click the little plus button on the bottom to capture this front shot. Right click the blue bar and choose track markers. It'll create my green lines highlighting the facial features, but if you look carefully, it's not accurate and we'll need to make some adjustments. This part will take a while because you'll have to manually position all those green circles so that align with the facial features on the model. Take your time with this. Next, it's time to select the body. Click the body menu on the left and choose a body style of your choice. After you're done, click the MetaHuman Identity Solve button up top. Then after Unreal Engine is finished thinking, click the Mesh to MetaHuman dropdown and select Auto Rig with Skeletal Mesh and Full human, uh, MetaHuman. Unreal Engine will start to upload this MetaHuman identity to the MetaHuman Creator server so you can further customize it in the web app. Now open up a web browser and go to the metahuman.unrealengine.com link. Sadly, the MetaHuman Creator web app is still sort of in beta, so you need to line up in a digital queue and wait for your turn to start a session. Quick tip, if you're an oddball like me that stays up like 4 or 5 or even 6 a.m., there's actually no queue, no lineup to use the MetaHuman Creator app. I just so happen to be awake at that time just because I'm done editing videos for the day. Don't stay up for 4 to 6 hours into the night just to save yourself 5 to 15 minutes of queuing up time. It's not actually actually that long of a wait. Choose the My MetaHuman tab up here and find the MetaHuman that you were working on. I did this a few times, so I have a few items here. I hope you remember your file name from the MetaHuman identity. But no worries, there's a preview of the mesh when you select each item. Then click the Edit button down below and we'll start to customize the textures of the MetaHuman. In the Custom Mesh menu on the left, we can change the influence of each facial feature on our mesh. This will affect the expressions on the MetaHuman. 
The blend menu allows us to blend different facial features from pre-existing metahuman templates that Epic Games had already created, and we can then use these to further customize our mesh. If you wanted the nose to be larger or like a certain metahuman you see in the library, this is the place to do it. Next up is the skin, which is my favorite part. This really brings the character to life after you apply this. Seeing my stylized sculpt come to life is really cool. You can adjust the skin, the freckles, and accents of the skin texture, but I'm not going to go into detail of this because the menu is really intuitive. Eyes. Choose the color you like. Teeth. Unfortunately, I believe you can only change the way the teeth are aligned on the jaw. You can't really change the, the jaw shape. My stylized character has a large mouth, but I couldn't figure out how to make the jaw larger. Makeup. I didn't do anything here because I don't know much about makeup, so I left it as default. Hair. Eyebrows. Eyelashes. Mustache. Beard. Body type. Clothing. If you choose a shirt with a graphic logo on it, later on in the video, I'll show you how to change the logo image to a custom image that you can add to your metahuman. Pants. And lastly, shoes. You can just close the web app. I believe it saves after every click. Now it's finally time to add our creation to the UE project. Let's go back to our Unreal Engine project. Click the green plus sign button. That's a drop down to open up the Quixel bridge. Next, click the little human icon on the left. That's the tab for the metahumans. Then select my metahumans so we can select our custom mesh that we just created. Here is our nice looking fellow. You'll have to download your metahuman to the disk before adding it to your UE project. This step takes forever because I have a slow bandwidth. Choose the quality of the metahuman you want. Just take the highest quality. Hit the download button and go make a cup of coffee. When you come back and it's all done, you'll have a check mark indicating that it's downloaded. Then hit the add button to add it to this UE project uh, that we have open. Where did our MetaHuman go? It's actually in the MetaHuman folder under the contents. Go search for it in the content browser. Uh, go to the MetaHuman folder and within that folder, you'll find our stylized uh, metahuman. It'll be the name that you gave it in the metahuman identity at the beginning. Inside the folder, you'll find the blueprint file of the metahuman that we just created. We'll need to add this to the viewport, so click and drag it to the viewport. Be patient while dragging this because it takes a while since it's loading the entire metahuman. One last thing I wanted to show you is how to customize the graphic image on the hoodie. This is super simple. Right click the metahuman in the viewport and select browse to asset to find the blueprint of the metahuman in the content browser. Go to the viewport tab of the blueprint, then select the torso component. In the details panel under the materials panel, find the material slot for the hoodie. Click the folder magnifying glass and Unreal Engine will take you right to the material of the hoodie in the content browser. Double click the hoodie material, and in the details panel, we want to find the print graphic map parameter to replace the graphic with our own custom image. I'm going to find my own logo that I imported into Unreal Engine and left click to select it in the content browser. Now back to the hoodie material, press the small button with the arrow. What this does is drops whatever we selected in the content browser in here, which is my logo. You'll see it update in real time in the viewport. But if you don't see it update, you may have to save the material first. I'm going to remap the colors back to whatever I had it originally in my image. This hoodie material is designed to remap the RGB channels to RGB colors selected in these parameters of the material. That's because Unreal Engine really likes packed textures. Pack textures use the RGB channels in the texture image to store different values because RGB are just numbers. Three numbers, like velocity is made up of XYZ, three numbers. Unreal Engine likes to keep things as flexible as possible and remaps the RGB to respective RGB parameters in the material. Since my logo was already in the correct RGB colors in the original image, I'll just select pure red for the first parameter, pure green for the second one, and the blue is actually a bit cyan. 
For the next video, I'm thinking of creating a more detailed tutorial on metahumans, or maybe I'll do it in a live stream because this was incredibly hard to edit and post. As for the swing bridge, I will be releasing that to my perk members along with instructions, notes, and comments on how to rig it up and align any type of skeleton rig to match the procedural motion. I haven't figured out how I'll explain that. Maybe I'll do it in a video because it's rather hard to write out in text.